Hey, Kate, what did you eat last night? Bone broth. Bone broth. Yes. Since I got my Instant Pot, I made beef bone broth. I got these beef marrow bones, and I roasted them, and then I made a broth out of them, and I keep hearing about all the nutritional benefits of um, bone broth and, and how good for you it's supposed to be. And so I thought, ooh, I'm going to have a cup of that. I didn't like it. <laughs> oh, no. Really? <laughs> yeah. It was... I don't know if this is a thing, but it was too beefy tasting. Like it, it worked. It was, it was proper broth. I think that's the problem is that it was just, I could taste the marrow or something and I did wow. not care for it. I was thinking, Oh, I'll sip on it out of a mug with some scallions, you know, and it'll be delicious because I've had beef stock that way and right. it's nice. And it had a funky taste that I did not care for. So the rest of that beef bone broth is getting used up in a different way. I'm not just having it straight up. I'm going to make some grains with it um, because mm -mm. that is fascinating because, you know, when I've read about those recipes, it always seems like it would be super nutritious, like one of those Popeye foods that we've always talked about. It, I think it is, and that's why I wanted to, wow. to have it. And I, it probably is that, but I couldn't even get through it. Wow. All right. Good I know. For you for trying. Sh yeah, 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 exactly. I was disappointed. I'm like, oh, this is going to be a tasty thing to sip on. It'll be so healthy, like a tea. But, you know, yeah, no, not not for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. How, how about you? What did you have? I had a grilled portobello mushroom with, you ready? Mashed cannellini beans and what was Ooh. called a harissa sauce. Oh, yum. Yeah, so it was really tasty. So obviously I took like red pepper, the shallot, there was garlic, olive oil, mint, lime juice, and Dijon mint. mustard and cilantro, red pepper flakes, and coriander and cayenne. Oh. And I just mixed all that up in a bowl. And that's sort of what was called the harissa dressing, which was actually, it was really good when I tasted it in the bowl. And then I cooked my cannellini beans, and then I mashed all of those up, and then I mixed in there. What kind of mix in, mixed into the cannellini bean was uh, truffle oil, so that was tasty. So I mixed that in, and then mm. it just creates this little paste. And then I grilled the portobello mushroom in the. I didn't. I baked it and then grilled it a little bit on top of the stove. And then once that came out, I spread the cannellini bean mixture right on top of the, the portobello mushroom. And then you just mm. pile that sort of harissa sauce on the top. It was really tasty. I have to mm. say. That sounds delicious. Yeah. I think those beans really gave a great texture to the portobello mushroom because I'm not a big fan of generally portobello mushrooms because, you know, as a vegetarian, every time you go into a restaurant, that's the big thing on the menu. So I don't mm -hmm. make them at home a lot because I feel like yeah. it's something I get out a lot. But I think the cannellini beans actually made that mushroom, I don't know, maybe it absorbs some of the moisture from the mushroom, but it just it just made the, mu the portobello mushroom so much more edible to me and so much more enjoyable as a whole mm. thing. Yeah. yeah, I love cannellini beans and I love harissa. So I could probably choke down a mushroom if it had that on it. <laughs> <laughs> choke down a mushroom. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another episode of You Won't Believe What I Ate Last Night. I'm Kate DeVore. And I'm Rick Fiore. And this is our ongoing conversation about food, health, weight management, and our endeavor to be and stay healthy in a really tasty world. With love, kindness, and compassion towards ourselves and others. Today, we have the privilege of talking to James Swanick, who is an Australian-American investor, entrepreneur, speaker, former sports center anchor on ESPN, and host of the James Swanick Show podcast. He's the creator of blue light blocking glasses Swannies from Swanick Sleep, which helps people sleep better, and also the 30-day no alcohol challenge, which helps people reduce or quit alcohol. Rick and I are very nervous about this conversation. I feel like I'm going to get some information that might be hard to swallow. <laughs> there we have it. Uh, Forbes magazine voted him one of the top 25 networking experts. Swanick has interviewed celebrities including Brad Pitt, Angelina Jolie, Kobe Bryant, David Beckham, and Arnold Schwarzenegger. And now he is with Rick Fiore and Kate DeVore. So he will add those to his bio promptly. Is uh, that? Did you know that was part of the agreement, James? I'm, I'm sorry. Are we springing that on you on the air? Well, this is what this is one of the great interviews of all time with Rick and Kate. I have to say. I'm 
<laughs> I'm going to insert you into my bio from now on. In. That's it. Thank you, James. Thank you so much for being with us today. It's such a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. So we also want to let you guys know that James has had the pleasant surprise of finding workmen next door to him during this recording. So if you hear any pounding or construction-y noises, that's all that is, and uh, no, no worries. So, James, our first question for you is, what did you eat last night? Yeah, thank you very much. I ate half a roasted chicken mm. with one full avocado, some lettuce, tomatoes, some peppers, and a little bit of onion. So mm. a good combination of, of protein and healthy fats. Sounds you know, delicious. No carbs, I notice. Yeah, I eat paleo style um, mm -hmm. 80% of the time. So what that means is that I tend to get my carbs from vegetables and salads and things like that. Um, mm -hmm. If I'm having potatoes, I'll make sure they're sweet potatoes because that's a yam. Um, yeah. Um, and so, I, you know, 80% of the time I'll eat like that. I, I, I try to keep it lean. I avoid bread. I avoid pasta. Uh, I have minimal amounts of rice. Um, and then the other 20% of the time I eat Cornetto ice creams. I eat Doritos. <laughs> I have Ben and Jerry's ice cream. I go to town. <laughs> I'm so glad to hear that because when you first described what you ate, I'm like, oh, I know who James is. He's that guy that I stalk around Whole Foods who has a little basket and they have like a little <laughs> roast chicken, probably some ginger, probably, you know, just a little bit of avocado, a little bit of vegetables and nothing else. And I always envy that basket. <laughs> I'm like, oh, God, if only I could shop that way. There's a Chevron gas station walking distance from where, where I live. And and let me tell you, uh, at least once a week, I do the walk to the Chevron gas station and I go to the ice cream section and I get out the ice cream and I get the lime chili um, uh, Doritos um, and I have a Kit Kat and I just I, I just I, I'm like, I love it. And you know what? I love it. I don't feel guilty about it. I just go for it. Brilliant. I thought you were going to say this Chevron gas station has these rotisserie chickens that are amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, my God, it's time to move to California. No, no, no. <laughs> my, my eating habit is very much as long as 80 percent of the time I know I'm eating in a healthy manner, which for me is the paleo style. I'm going to do whatever I, the hell I want for the other 20 percent. And what I found is that that has created a, a healthy lifestyle in general. Hmm. And it's not one of these things where I'm like really focused for 30 days and then I crash for like two weeks and eat crap food. I just like to I like to enjoy my eating. I just like to enjoy life. And because of that, I, I tend to to eat very healthily overall. So that leads us, you've actually sort of answered one of our questions of how do you stay healthy in a really tasty world? It sounds like that's what you do. So that's your brand of moderation, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, I, I tried this whole diet thing. Um, and what I found was is that I, I, I was really good on the diet that lasted, say, two weeks, three weeks, a month. But then as soon as I finished it, I was like, okay, right, give me chips, give me bad food, give me Coca-Cola. And then I would just go back to whatever weight or whatever, you know, poor health I had beforehand. So instead, I stopped making it so like I'm on for this and I'm off for this. And I just came up with this 80-20 thing. And, and I just went, I'll, you know, I'll make healthy decisions most of the time, but, I, but I'll also allow myself unhealthy decisions some of the time. Mm -hmm. And and that, that's been so much more sustainable for the last eight years. I've always been around the same body weight, around 185 pounds, um, same body fat percentage. Um, and I work out in the gym and I'm healthy and it, it just, I feel great. Yeah. And Those you guys so who can't see him, he appears to be very fit just for the, <laughs> for the people who are not able to see you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. So you. great habits you have. So let's start by... Can you define habit? What is a habit? Yeah, a habit is, is something that uh, you do that you either like fall over and trip over yourself and you just do without even thinking about it. Or it's something that you have thought about and forced into happening and you just the, – the, the me mechanism of your brain and your body just pushes you into that inertia where you do it. So it's either a subconscious thing or a conscious thing, but it's something that you do repeatedly, which can either serve you or it can either really hurt you, quite frankly. Hmm. So how, let's, so how do you start to differentiate between like when, what, what defines a good habit for you and a bad habit for you? Like what's your radar? Like when does the needle change? 
Well, well, sadly, it's taken me about 40 years to, to figure out what my bad habits were consciously. <laughs> but um, uh, now I re- now I actually do like a, a, a habit sit down where for 30 minutes I'll get a pen and paper and I will write down everything that I do and everything that I think from the moment my eyes open in the morning from when I wake up to the moment my eyes close and when I, when I go to sleep. And mm. so what I... And when I do that kind of stock take, if you like, I start looking at things like when I use the bathroom, when I put food in my mouth, when I have what time I have a cup of coffee, when I have depressive thoughts, when I'm feeling really connected, um, when I eat a packet of Doritos, when I want to eat a packet of Doritos, um, when I take a supplement, um, when I get into a fight, um, what time I sleep. What time I wake up? How many times did I wake up during the night? Like all of these things, I do a stock take. And all of those things are habits. They're all habits. You know, whether you're feeling ha- um, happy is a, is, a, is a habit. When you feel mm. down and stressed is a habit. But the mm. first thing I do to identify them is I, I take a stock take. I'll literally just go top to bottom, write it down. Uh, and I'll track my, my, my day maybe over a week. And then I'll look at it and I'll go, hmm, that's interesting. I have the habit of dining out only once a week or I have the habit of staying in my home and not going out three days a week. Hmm, I have the habit of only getting natural sunlight four days a week and so forth. And that Mm. that really enables me to really identify habits that are serving me and habits that are not. That is so cool. And that is so overwhelming. So I'm listening to you (laughs) talk about that. (laughs) And the first thing... The first thing out of my mouth is, are you type A? (laughs) Because the first thing is, I hear it's like, oh my God, I love that. I like it. That's such a type A thing to do. And I've tried it and I always feel miserably at it because I'm not the person that's been able to journal. I can't even be rigorous about that. Mm -hmm. Maybe for a little bit, but it's not something that sticks with me. Well, let's do a little exercise right now and see. What what time is it where you're recording this right now, Rick? 12, 16 p.m. Okay, great. So what time did you wake up this morning? I woke up about 6.30. Okay, and what did you do uh, after you woke up? I meandered in bed for a few minutes. <laughs> I just laid there. Yeah. I got up. I used the bathroom. I let mm-hmm. my dog out for a quick little tinkle. Mm-hmm. I did an initial email thing for mm-hmm. work. Mm-hmm. And then I went back to bed for about half an hour. Mm-hmm. And just I didn't sleep, but mm-hmm. I just went back to bed. And then I got up and I went for a walk. Mm-hmm. And made breakfast. Okay, great. So just so right up to breakfast, look at all those things that you've done. You've got habits all there, and it only took twenty seconds. So it's actually not that overwhelming when you right. really break it down, right? right? Like you said, oh my god, wow, you're Type A. That's crazy. But it, but we create a story in our minds and our heads that it is so crazy. But really, that took you twenty seconds to just outline that you that you woke up at six thirty, you meandered in bed till six thirty three. Or, or, or a few minutes, you went to the bathroom, you took the dog out to have a little tinkle, you sent an email, you went back to, to bed for 30 minutes, then you went for a walk, and then you made breakfast. Well, there you go. You've actually just done a habit stock take already, and it took you 20 seconds. Are you so overwhelmed and stressed out that your life's going to end through that exercise? <laughs> James, James, how dare you make a point on our podcast? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, my God. Your couch is so comfortable. Can I just stay here? No, uh, yeah. No, it was not overwhelming at all. It was not. See, I wonder also, part of it is is the writing it down. I think that we're of the generation, Rick, where we have to write that shit down in a journal with a pen. I wonder yeah. if you recorded it in your notes app or something, if it would become more if you wanted oh, to do it. You know, like yeah, if yeah, you yeah. just yeah, spoke totally. it. Yeah, I have an iPhone and when I'm, and I just go into the notes section of my phone and I, and I'll sometimes type it out there. I also keep a journal handy and just for scribbling and I'll write things down as well. Whatever, whatever works for you. You can also just leave a voice note, you know, and on, 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 on your phone. It doesn't have to be written down, but I like to see it written down because it provides a really good visual clue as to how I'm spending my, my days. So then yep. if you see a habit on there that you're not impressed by mm-hmm. and you're like, oh, what do you do? Well, first thing, congratulations for having enough awareness to mm-hmm. actually identify <laughs> that it is a bad habit. So right? you're, you're already winning by having this awareness. Totally. Level. Awareness always comes before change, right? Like that has mm-hmm. to be the first step. 
it's the habits that we're blind to that we can't see are the ones that can really can really hurt us. Mm. Um, so awareness, uh, and then and then we we figure out how is it not hurt, how is it not helping us if we're talking about a bad habit, of course, and then it's simply changing the course of action. It's taking an action to ensure that we replace that bad habit with a uh, a good habit. So awareness and then taking action. So from what I've been reading about you, you're pretty clear that an old, a bad habit just can't be taken away, right? We, we got to get rid of this mindset. You just, you just can't get rid of it. It has to be replaced. There has to be a new pattern put in place, correct? It doesn't have to, but it's far more effective if you replace a bad habit with, uh, with a good habit. If you're just trying to eliminate, it tends to rear its ugly head quite a lot. Yeah, it's a lot easier to do something than to not do something, right? So if you choose to do something else, yeah. Yeah, and it, it's, you know, it's it's fascinating. The mind will move you towards what you tell it to do, and it will keep you stuck in what you tell it not to do. Okay, so mm-hmm. so another, let me let me let me use an um, an example here. So mm-hmm. close your eyes, cl- cl- both of you, close your eyes. Mm-hmm. Do not think about a pink elephant. <laughs> Do not picture a pink elephant. Okay, open your eyes. What what happened? I thought about a purple elephant. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about a pink. I thought about a pink elephant. <laughs> okay, okay. So then I thought, I, I want to know what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> But Rick and Kate, I told you not to think about that. Right? <laughs> I told you not to think about a pink elephant. Now, now, if I told you to think about an elephant, you would think about an elephant, right? So either way, you're thinking about the elephant, right? So, so the the human mind responds to what you tell it to do, but it will always keep you stuck when you tell it what not to do. And for for cigarette smokers, for example, I think it's. I think they all this campaign like quit smoking, quit smoking, you got to quit. I actually think that that's an ineffective way of helping people um, give up smoking. And I know they put millions of dollars behind it in national health campaigns. And I understand the idea. It's like you should quit smoking. You should stop smoking. But if we change the message to something like I only breathe in fresh air, mm. then that is telling the body and the brain what to do. And so therefore you focus on only ever breathing in fresh air, which means you don't even think about the cigarettes or you're so focused on only breathing in fresh air that smoking a cigarette, the chances of you doing that diminish exponentially. The problem is, is then when we say don't smoke a cigarette or you should quit cigarettes, what are we thinking about? We're thinking about cigarettes, right? And so it stays in our head. It stays in our conscious. The cravings continue to stay there. And then we end up, you know, maybe quitting for some time, but then ultimately going back to it. Something that that brings up that I, I, I of course, I am with you completely on that yeah. is, is Rick had this great question that, so I'm, I'm hijacking your question, Rick, about, Please. um, the relation, the difference between emotional habits and physical habits. Just so that's a physical habit that we're talking about right there. And what, where I think we sometimes go wrong with positive, that, that made me think of, affirmations you know like when people are feeling depressed or sad there's the the idea potentially of like life is wonderful you know we're supposed to come up with affirmations and the thing that can be potentially problematic about imposing positive thoughts is that they can be overlying rot if you don't deal with the thing that's in there imposing a positive thought on it is not particularly helpful so it feels like there might be a difference between emotional habits and physical habits with with that uh concept in mind do you have anything to say about that does that make sense first of all at all what i just said yeah no 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 sure and you're speaking to someone who's done a lot of self-development type programs where you go in there and they 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 shine a light on your childhood you know from when you were born to when you were eight years old which is when your personality is formed and and understanding that and understanding you know how i grew up and and things that happened to me um has had the greatest impact on my happiness levels. Now, the affirmations on top of that awareness take it to the next level. It's like you, it's like you, you're just operating at, at as at as uh, as good a level as you possibly can. Uh, so this brings up this whole idea of um, legacy in relation to habits, right? Particularly when maybe you get older. I just hit the fifty year old mark, so I'm like, oh wow. 
I think this idea that I keep trying these these things and like you put these new habits in place and they last for a while, but then you revert back. So what do you say? To, what's the advice to someone who's really dealing with this idea that, wow, I've been at this like for, say, 30 of my 50 years and I still keep reverting back? For me, what really had the biggest impact was getting doing experiential exercises, um, speaking to trained professionals, um, you know, like I said, whether it's a psychologist or, or someone else, uh, psychotherapy, and really getting into, you know, how you became who you became from 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 childhood. So, I wish I had a sexier answer for you. Um, it's just my experience has been going in, digging deep has given me the biggest the biggest breakthroughs in that. And it, and it sounds like you keep returning to do the work, right? Yeah, I, do, I do. I mean, I, yeah. someone said it to me the other day, actually. I, I was joking. I said, oh, I've done all this work, but I'm not enlightened yet. And she said to me, um, you know, enlightenment is not a, not a destination. You know, like it's it's – because otherwise you just keep bouncing from self-development program to self-development program to the one book to the next self-help book to the next self-help book. And mm-hmm. you're always constant – constantly trying to find this you, you know this beautiful utopia where you're just happy all the time <laughs> I'm, not happy. Mm-hmm. I'm not happy all the time i mean i'm i'm happy a lot of the time and and generally speaking i'm happier but i have the tools now to be able to deal with not so happy times a hell of a lot better yeah i think okay. we we conflate happiness and joy as a culture i think that that when we think, well, when I'm happy, that's usually when we're joyous. And I think there is a difference between happiness and joy. I think happiness might be a low level baseline state of peace that is not necessarily euphoric or exciting or thrilling or, you know, it's just a baseline of peacefulness, perhaps, as opposed to something that's excitingly positive. Yeah, I, I, I'm 42 years old as we're recording this, and and um, I've really fallen into this this state of contentment. You know, yeah, like, like, yeah. It's like when I was in my 20s and early 30s, I was just chasing the dopamine hit all the time. You know, like let's go to the Super Bowl. Okay, I'm going to the Sundance Film Festival. I'm going to travel around the world. I'm going to go to, go to this place. I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to experience and 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 I had all of these. these that sounds short- terrible, James. That sounds awful. <laughs> <laughs> it was wonderful. It was wonderful. You know, I did so many cool things in my life. I went and lived in LA. I went to the Oscars. I interviewed movie stars. I hosted a TV show. I did all these cool things, right? These accomplishments. And you know what? It was awesome. However, it, they were kind of like short bursts of awesome. You know, it was like this dopamine serotonin kind of hit. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what I mean. Mm-hmm. Like that's joy, that's thrill, yes. that's excitement. It's not the same as generic happiness, which is more calm. Perhaps. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's like true long-standing contentment, I believe comes from it's very simple things. Do you have, you know, solid relationships with your family? Do you have a good amount of friends? Are you able to contribute to society, you know, give to people less fortunate than you? Um, do you have clean water? Uh, do you have uh, ongoing sunlight that can give you vitamin D and increase your moods? Do you exercise? Are you healthy? Do you eat with friends? I mean, they've done these studies that actually show that the happiest that humans are is when they're eating food. If you can, it's such an amazing, it's such an amazing thing. Like the happiest we are is when we're eating food. And so, if not you surprised. Eat, and if not you could, at all. And if you could eat food with friends or <sighs> loved ones, the happiness levels go, go up exponentially from there. I mean, it's basic stuff, right? It's basic stuff. But that's what I mean by just uh, just contentment. I, I'm less likely now to go off and race off to these cool, sexy events and things and get the get the get the hit. I'm now more kind of moving into a like, hey, I want to just go and have have dinner or lunch with a friend or with friends or or my partner and, um, you know, go and sit in the sun and exercise and things like that. That that's what gives me you know a level of contentment now. Hey James, so when you're we're talking about food, in your experience, when people are struggling with weight or over overeating, what are the top habits you notice? Yeah, well, people will um, uh, tend to. Uh, have too big of a plate to begin with. And I always say if quantity of food 
um, is a is an issue for you, then if you get one of those smaller plates, like just say this is the size of a normal plate, if you just get one of those smaller plates and pack the food onto that, it tricks the brain into thinking that the plate is full, even though it's smaller, it's a smaller quantity. Um, yeah. So that is that's really that's a great trick, uh, a great habit for for people who uh, who overeat. The other thing is just sitting down before you put the first bite into your um, first mouthful uh, in is to actually just stop, close your eyes, and with intention just think about everything that went into that plate of food. So for example, let's do my meal last night. I had a half roast chicken with some avocado and some um, some salad. Well, let's look at the chicken. I don't know where the chicken was born, but someone had to raise those chickens. Someone had to feed the chickens. Someone had to slaughter the chickens. Someone had to skin the chicken. Someone had to deliver the chicken to whatever store I bought it from. Someone then had to pack it up and put a barcode on the, on the chicken. Someone had to then sell me the chicken. I had then had to walk down the road with the chicken, and I had to then you know, cut it open and put it on my plate. That's a huge amount of work that's gone into that chicken getting on my plate. Same things with the avocado, avocados and the salad, right? Someone had to had to plant um, plant the vegetables and the crops. If you just think about that before you start eating, what I find is that my eating slows down a lot. I don't just hop it into my face. I kind of like eat it with intention. I'm grateful for it. And so because I slow down my eating and I chew a lot more and there's more saliva in my mouth, I tend to feel uh, get full um, uh, uh, quicker, which means I'm not then going back for a second or a third serving. Um, whereas when I'm eating in a hurry, I'm like, oh, I'm so hungry. I'm still hungry. Give me some more. Eat, 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 eat. So I found simple things like that to be a huge, a huge thing. And then the other thing is, which is the most important. Hang on. Before you go to the most important, do you do the same thing when you're eating your Doritos? <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious. I'm genuinely asking. It's a legitimate question. I'm not trying to be snarky at I all. I, I don't actually. Yeah, That's I don't. interesting. No. Okay. So now, sorry, the most important thing that I now derailed us from. <laughs> <laughs> The most important for me um, is, uh, and the most important habit I feel, is out of sight, out of mind. And what that means is, mm. wherever you're listening to this podcast episode right now, go into your kitchen and look at what you have in the pantry and what you have in your fridge and throw everything out that you know is not healthy. Mm-hmm. And that's it. If it's not in your home, you won't eat it. It's pretty simple stuff. But if you like wake up in the morning and you go into the pantry and there's sugary cornflakes and you, and 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 there's yeah. and there's sugar. If you have coffee and you always have sugar in your coffee, well, there and you've got sugar in your house. Well, you're going to go and put the sugar in your coffee. You know, like if you know that that bread and pasta are just dead carbs for you, and you eat white bread and you know like all that kind of stuff, don't buy it. And don't put it in your pantry. And in relation to don't buy it, you, I actually avoid those areas of supermarkets. There's a Trader Joe's down the, down the road from me. And, um, you know, I don't go into the section that has the cookies and the crisps and the, and the, and the, and the things, and the things like that when I go to do a general grocery shop. I just walk down to the Chevron gas station to get my Doritos. <laughs> the one that's going to that and really resonates week. with me because one of the biggest changes I made years ago is I stopped having particularly ice cream and chips in my house. And if I really want them, I really have to go get them. I have to do my own like Chevron run. Mm. Yeah. So I, I have, really love that idea. I have a program called 30 Day No Alcohol Challenge, which which helps social drinkers quit alcohol for 30 days. And one of the lessons, um, and one of the video modules in that program that I, where I teach people is um, well, there's two parts. One of them is remove alcohol from from your site, right? And and one of the, two examples of that is, um, if you kept if you keep wine on a on a kitchen bench and you see it, you're more likely to drink that. So what I say is, take it out to the garage and stick it like on the top shelf. So you have to then go and get on a on a on a, on a ladder to go and reach it, mm-hmm. or, or put it if you're keeping f- uh, wine in the fridge instead of having it in the front right section when you open the door. Put it at the back of the fridge and put all the groceries in front of it, so so it's out of sight and it's out of mind. Now the best thing mm-hmm. is just remove alcohol from the house altogether. Sure. But it, but if you're going to keep it in there, at least get it out of sight. And and people who've taken that program 
have reported that they they end up not seeing it, they don't think about it, and they therefore re- reduce or quit their ca- alcohol consumption. Is it possible for people to do this cleanse or or thirty day challenge, and then return to alcohol in moderation, or do you feel like the goal is really that it's just you got to just quit? No, no, I, I it, it's absolutely possible to return in moderation and thousands of people who've taken my 30 day no alcohol challenge program have done exactly that. So what happened, what invariably happens is people who do the program will quit for 30 days. Now, most people will return to some drinking, but at a far reduced level than, than previously. Mm. A, a lot of people will just stay quit. And, and have, you know, three years now, I've got people who've gone three years because I launched this thing three and a half years ago mm-hmm. who have not had a drop of alcohol from when, from when they, st- when they started mm. and they love it and they're happy and they're, they're thrilled. And even the people who return to moderate drinking are happier as happy as well because they only have the drink on, on, on rare occasions or now it, it hasn't become this necessity to help them relieve stress. They just do it in a social setting, for mm-hmm. example. Mm-hmm. Um, Having said that, I don't want to just, you know, sell you on the idea that everyone who does the 30 day no alcohol challenge program is all of a sudden cured of their, of their alcohol issues. There are a small group of people who do the program who go the 30 days, celebrate, say, I'm going to go back to moderate drinking. And then they go down a, a, a spiral where now they're back to like, Oh, Man, I'm back to square one. I got to do this. I got to do the challenge again. And that's kind of more like the mm. way we're talking about at the top of the show, like the 30 day diets, you know, like I don't like to call it like a diet where it's like bang and then back on it, bang and then you're back on. So it, look, it just depends on your, it depends on a lot of things, including your childhood, depending on your, you know, habits, depending on how old you are, depending on stress levels, depending on hormones, depending on how well or how self disciplined you are. Um, but I can tell you, just to answer your initial question, there are, there are hundreds of people who've done my program who have successfully gone back and returned to, to drinking, but in a, in a, in a much more moderate manner than, than when they started the challenge. Cool. Thank you. So James, if, when people are done listening to this podcast, when they put down their earphones, what's one great tip or a hint or that you would say to do today in relation to possibly maybe a habit Mm. change or a new habit well look i'm sure you've spoken about this before and we kind of touched on it but um i like to first thing in the morning write down um things that i am grateful for and i know that's simple i know it's rehashed many times but there's a reason Mm -hmm. there are Listen, I, I'm very scientific and analytical, so I, I, I love reading studies and, and, and tests that people have done, and they show that if you just express gratitude first thing in the morning and or last thing before you go to sleep at night, um, your, your contentment levels um, go up uh, exponentially. So Yeah, they now- say that gratitude is the most rewarding emotion. I mean, I, I'm just showing you here. This is just a little thing that I scribble on, and I've. Uh, you can see there it says gratitude. Um, I'm just showing, I, and it I does. just, I just literally just bang it out. And you know what? Most mornings I don't want to write it because I wake up and I'm like, <laughs> I open up my eyes and I'm thinking, oh man, my life sucks. My life really, really is hard. You know, I like, can't believe I got this thing on today. Oh, how am I going to get through this? Oh man, like. Yeah, I do. Like, I open my eyes, and the first thoughts that I have is not, "Oh, wow, I'm so happy and everything is awesome." No, I work open my eyes, and I'm like, "Oh, man, this is tough." But I'll tell you what happens. I get up out of bed, and I get this stupid book, and I call it stupid because that's what I'm thinking about it when I'm <laughs> <laughs> when I'm opening it up, and I'm like. All right, what am I grateful for? Okay, here we go. <laughs> Gratitude. And I just write. And then this is what I wrote this morning. And it said, um, it was grat- grateful for things, something that happened yesterday. I said, had a great lunch with my friend Brad. Uh, he responded well to my, my issue, got work done, had a coaching call with Lynn, 
uh, got webinar stuff moving forward. Now, those things might not make sense to you, the, the you know, personal things, combination of work and, and, a, and a coach and, and things like that. But just writing that gets me out of this, oh, poor me, my life sucks, everything's so hard kind of mindset. And then I'm up and, I'm up and moving. So, you know, mm. I know, I know it's not, we're always looking for some new secret formula and I know it's yeah. not sexy to say mm. gratitude, but all the studies just say that if you're grateful and, and, uh, and you, you also get, you know, an, a good natural sunlight and you drink lots of water and you eat healthy and you have food with friends, your life's just going to be so just, it's, it's generally speaking, you're going to have a very happy, content life. I love that so much. Cool. Bottom line, you get it done. Yeah. <laughs> it's got to get it done. I was reading an interview with Arnold Schwarzenegger last night, and he was saying uh, that he exercises every single day, and he says the way that he's been able to keep that routine is that he doesn't think about it. He wakes up in the morning, and it's just like there's no thinking. It's like, He's like a robot. Puts his clothes on, gets on his bicycle, rides um, uh, to the gym, goes and does a workout, comes back, and then he starts his day. He just doesn't think about it. He just does it. Mm-hmm. So where can people find you, James? And if you're interested in quitting alcohol, if you go to um, 30daynoalcoholchallenge.com, uh, you can sign up there and join our membership group, and you'll go into a Facebook group, make new friends, and, and it's a really fun way to quit alcohol for 30 days as opposed to a like, oh, my life sucks, I've got to quit alcohol. I, I, <laughs> I, make, I, make it really, I make it really fun for people and, 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 uh, and as fun as it can be, I guess, for people who are like so addicted <laughs> to their alcohol. <laughs> yeah. You can find me on social media at just at James Swanick. I'm on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook, so you can find me there. Yeah, you've got your finger in so many pies and, and you seem to be baking them all beautifully. Such a well, pleasure to meet with you, James. James. Rick Thank and you Kate, so much. Thank you for having me. It was a real pleasure to uh, speak with you guys. You guys ask great questions. Thank you. Well, great. Oh, Thank yeah. you. And as always, while you're at it, make sure you follow us. You can find us on Facebook. You can find us on Instagram. You can also remember, if you have any questions, send them to us via email to you won't believe what I ate at gmail.com. You can also go to our website, you won't believe what I ate.com. And Rick and does a really great job of maintaining that website so that each episode, any websites or things like that that our guests, if we have guests on that, that episode, they're going to be up there. So you can find James on our website. Right. Well, thank you so much. This was so wonderful. Thanks so Thanks much. Thanks for having me.